So thank you for inviting me to participate. It has been a, I, I have really enjoyed the conference and I, uh, I think this paper is, is, is great. So thank you for assign, assigning this paper too. Um, let me uh, present a brief summary of the paper. So Agustin Schatz did a great job uh, presenting the paper, but let me just summarize. Uh, I think the paper goes after a very natural question. So why not use assets, uh, in this case reserves, to pay debt? And uh, so why, why would you want to use assets to pay debt? Um, at least one reason uh, consistent with the model Agustin presented is that if you use assets to pay debt, this will lower default risk. Um, so if this is the case, why is that uh, we don't see governments using more assets to pay debt? And Agustin's theory is, uh, I think, a very natural one. Um, his theory is that a, a patient central bank will accumulate reserves to mitigate the overborrowing by an impatient government. Um, so I think it's a very natural uh, theory. Now, as he uh, suggested, and I, I, I'm going to talk a little bit about that, um, it's not as obvious as, as it sounds. So it's not obvious that just by having an, a, a, a more patient central bank, this will be enough to upset overborrowing by the impatient government. So I, I want to uh, talk a little bit about the details and, and uh, ask Agustin also how, how he, he sees, he sees this, uh, this mechanism. Okay. Uh, then uh, Agustin also uh, shows that in his models, both reserves and debt will increase in good times, uh, which is consistent with the data. And as he uh, presented, uh, he also shows that in the data, both reserve and, 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 and central bank independence have increased over time. Uh, which is consistent uh, with the theory he uh, he presents. Uh, so overall, I think it's a very nice contribution to the to the literature. Um, so I will mostly ask some uh, questions and maybe Agustin can share uh, more information about and, and can tell us what he thinks about this. Um, so let me uh, talk a little bit about how I think about the mechanism and and this is mostly consistent with uh, the way Agustin presented. Uh, but I, I think there are some uh, details that uh, maybe um, he can he can clarify. Uh, so I, I like to think what will happen if uh, we have one additional unit of reserves. So in the in the model, what what he shows that happens, and this is uh, the, the key for his results, is that the additional unit of reserves will lower equilibrium consumption. Okay, and this is how the central bank, by accumulating uh, reserves, is mitigating the overconsumption. Uh, that will be chosen by the the, uh, the impatient government, okay? And uh, you can mitigate overconsumption because an increase in uh, uh, the, the additional unit of reserve will increase debt by less than one unit, okay? And this is how uh, the central bank mitigates net overborrowing, if you want, okay? So the, the level of debt will actually be higher, uh, but the net level of debt uh, will be lower. That's, uh, yeah. And then, uh, but wh why this is happening, and I have a quotation mark here, because this is not exactly the way uh, Agustin says it. So he, he seems to indicate that this is what, what's going on and what he has in mind. Uh, but I think the, the way to think about this is that uh, the additional unit of reserve will make the bond price more responsive to the debt level. Uh, so we know that in the, in the default model, uh, and this is something Agustin could present the, the, the optimality conditions, so we know that in the default model, a key marginal cost of borrowing is that uh, by increasing borrowing, by increasing the level of debt, the government will lower the bond price, which will lower uh, current consumption, okay? So this derivative of the bond price with respect to the, to the debt level, I think this is increasing uh, with respect to the level of reserves. And I think this is the key to, to understanding what's uh, going on in the, in the paper. And I, I would think suggest this, but doesn't quite show exactly this. Um, so I, I would like to know what, what he thinks about, uh, about this way of presenting the, uh, the mechanism. And something that is key to, to, to understand this is that uh, this, change, uh, this change in the derivative of the, of the bond price is at a dead level that will undo the extra reserve unit, uh, the effect of the extra reserve unit on consumption. So uh, if the government wanted to undo uh, fully the effect on, of, on consumption of this extra unit of reserve, 
uh, he will be facing a higher derivative of the bond price. And I think this is the key uh, for the result. Um, so this got me thinking a little bit uh, about whether this uh, mechanism uh, is uh, plausible. Uh, so something that at, at first sight uh, may uh, look strange about this mechanism is that, uh, so forget about the model for a minute. If, if you talk with policymakers about how they think about uh, the accumulation of reserves, probably they will tell you that a country with more reserves is a, is a safer country. Um, probably they will also tell you that for safer countries, uh, changes in debt or if you want fiscal, fiscal shocks or, or, or in, any kind of shocks have a smaller effect on the spread, okay? Uh, so this makes the, I, I think this, this reasoning uh, will be, uh, will go against the, the mechanism in the paper. But I think the, the detail, what is important here is that this will only, uh, the, the mechanism in the paper required this uh, change in the derivative I'm talking about to, to happen at the level of debt that will fully upset the effect of reserves on consumption. Uh, so we are talking at a high level of debt, maybe higher than what we see in equilibrium. Uh, but that, this uh, got me thinking uh, empirically, how, how could, could we test the, 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 the relevance of the mechanism uh, Agustin is, is uh, proposing? Uh, but then, let me emphasize that I, I, this is beyond the scope of the paper. I think that the paper is uh, good, good uh, as it is, but uh, maybe in the future we can think um, about uh, an empirical test of the possibility of this uh, mechanism. Um, now, maybe uh, Agustin could do a, a little bit more uh, about this. So uh, I, I think, again, a key is that uh, debt increases less than reserves uh, for his mechanism to, to work. So he emphasizes that net debt uh, will go down. And uh, since he's emphasizing uh, the change in, in, in reserves over time, and, and and how this may be triggered by a, an increase in independence, uh, maybe he can look at uh, what happened with debt over time. Um, so I went back and, and looked at uh, what the, the data we, we plotted in the paper with Javier and, and Juan Carlos. And I think maybe, yes, it's true that uh, just by a, a first glance, it may be true that uh, debt increase, uh, increase less than uh, reserves over time. Uh, but it may also be true that it didn't increase at all, which I think it could be inconsistent uh, with uh, Augustine theory. And another way Augustine could think about uh, testing a bit further his theory is to think about the case of Mexico, for example, he uses it in the calibration. And uh, so he has in the data this clear jump in the level of independence on central bank at some point. So what would happen if, if you uh, introduce that in the, in the model and look at the dynamics of what will happen after that? Uh, I'm guessing that in the model, both debt, debt and, and, and reserves will increase. Um, so is that consistent with what we see in the data or not? Um, so that will be a, a way of, of testing that. Uh, and of course, we could, we could try to test uh, more explicitly what happened with this uh, derivative. Um, so first, uh, it would be nice to see exactly what happened in the in the model with this derivative in, in the simulations of the model, if you want, or at, at the at the equilibrium point in the in the in the model with with this derivative. Uh, I'm guessing that this derivative will increase even even there, uh, as I was think kind of suggested. Uh, this may not be very significant uh, quantitatively, if you want, uh, but it would be uh, good to know and and good to know whether whether this is something that. Um, that we want to, to that we could test with, with data. Um, I, I see here also a, a bit of an inconsistency in that, uh, as Agustin just did in the presentation, he's suggesting that uh, the effect on reserves on, on, on the bond price is, is very small. Um, but in a way, it has to be significant enough for his mechanism to work or at least the, the effect of reserves on the derivative of the bond price with respect to debt has to be significant enough. Um, so I, I think the, the, there should be a way to, to reconcile these, these messages uh, that are in the paper. Okay. Um, so one period debt, he, he presented a, a model with one period debt. Uh, he says in the version of the paper I read that he wants to go to the, to the, 
to the model with long-term debt. Uh, I think it will be important. So I think he, his, 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 uh, his, the theory he presents is, is, is clear as it is. But uh, for example, when we go to the quantitative results, it's always difficult to interpret the, the quantitative results with, with one period debt. Um, so as, as one example, uh, if I look at the reserves to debt service ratio in his model, uh, this reserves to debt service is going to be quite low because, um, because the, the debt service is the whole debt stock. So the debt service in his model is, is very high. It's like 40% of GDP. Uh, so uh, he chooses to highlight as a quantitative result that he explained 80%, uh, I think, of the, debt, uh, of, of the uh, reserve to GDP ratio in, in Mexico. But if I wanted to look at the reserve to debt service ratio, it would be much less. Um, I'm not saying this is very important or something we, we, we should worry about, uh, but uh, it's an inconsistency that, that is difficult to, to, to get around uh, when you have a model with one period debt. So he also mentioned at some point in the paper that he, he has or he wants to have a different calibration in which he targets the, the debt service ratio. Uh, so I, I'm curious to whether he has done that and, and what, what would be the prediction for the reserve to GDP ratio with that calibration. But my guess is that the reserve to GDP ratio has to be much, uh, much lower. Okay. And I also want to, to highlight that. Um, so if he goes to the a model with long-term debt, uh, there will be, uh, I think, a time inconsistency in the accumulation of reserves. So basically what's gonna happen is that uh, more reserves in the future imply higher default probabilities in the future. And this implies a lower bond price today. Uh, because of that, uh, a central bank that wants a higher bond price today, maybe will want to promise to, uh, to have less reserves in the future, okay? So this will cer certainly uh, influence uh, the level of reserves the central banks uh, wants to choose. Um, of course, uh, Agustin is talking about an independent central bank and not about a central bank with commitment. And these two are not the same, uh, but I think uh, this may be uh, worth uh, exploring. Commitment may be worth, worth exploring. Again, maybe in a different paper, I'm not saying Agustin has to, has to do this, um, but certainly sometimes the paper reads as is, is want to recommend what uh, central banks should do with, with reserves. And for that, for sure, we want to take into account commitment. And, um, and certainly many central banks that uh, believe that they are independent, uh, they also like to believe that they can commit to future policies. So I, I think commitment is, is, a, is an important aspect and, and, and will become an important aspect if, if Agustin wants to look really at, at, at long-term debt. Okay. A, a brief uh, comment on, on computation. So in a old paper with, with Juan Carlos and, and Horacio, when we, we uh, solved the standard default model, uh, it was significantly faster to, to solve the model as the limit of a finite horizon economy. I wonder, I will guess that this is also the, the case for the, for the, uh, the model Agustin is solving. Um, so the way he's solving the model, he's uh, solving for different equilibrium functions in some order and, and iterating on that. Uh, that's usually slower, so I wonder why he, he doesn't go to the to the, finite, the, the limit of the finite horizon economy. Um, and somewhat related to that, I got me thinking, uh, so he has this assumption on, on uh, the central bank and the government moving simultaneously. I think uh, he, he doesn't need that, uh, but I, I would like him to, to confirm or deny or, or, or maybe explore that the, the timing assumption is, is not important for, for his mechanism. A couple of comments on the on the calibration. Um, so Agustin is assuming. Yes, one minute, Leonard. Okay. Yeah, Agustin is assuming that the the central bank is is uh, impatient because of the higher interest rates in Mexico. Uh, this is related to the first paper in the conference. I, I, maybe the higher interest rate in Mexico doesn't mean that Mexicans are more impatient. So I wonder why he does that. Uh, the choice of the correlation of total public debt with GDP as a calibration target is, is also uh, got me thinking. Um, then the, the, inter the relation to the deterministic model and Alfaro and Kansuk, I think is also not clear because he doesn't have default in the, in the deterministic model. Um, 
talking about the implementable, in, implementable rules for reserve accumulation. He mentioned in the paper, I think in general it's a bad idea, but we can talk more about that later. More, more uh, results about the consolidated government. Um, and yeah, let me, let me, nothing, nothing really important there, but uh, overall, let me say it's a, it's a very nice paper. I think it's a clear contribution to the literature and there are some interesting questions for future research uh, in the paper. Thank you very much.